Welcome to Intro to C Programming. Today we are going to continue our discussion of C string functions. Now, I'm going to tell you uh, before I go through this uh, lecture that I have seven functions that we're going to go over. And this is not a very exciting lecture, but the material that's covered here is going to be important and they are very useful functions to understand how they work. So I'll try to go through them quickly, but uh, with enough detail so that you understand how they work and what they do. Uh, and then we will write our program uh, for this lecture and hopefully that will help you to understand some more of these functions. So the first one we have is uh, string char and what this function does is locates the first occurrence of the character denoted by the ASCII value of the integer passed in, um, passed in the string. So we call this function string char, we pass in a string, remember that first parameter there now since it's const means that it won't be changed by uh, this function call. And uh, then the second parameter, even though it says an integer, it's actually a character that's being passed in there. The way that we're going to pass it is as an ASCII value with those uh, little quotation marks around the character, and it'll convert it to the ASCII value for us. So we're going to pass a character in there, and it'll automatically convert it to an integer for us. It's going to find the first occurrence of that character in the string, and it's going to return to us a pointer to that character in the string if it exists. Otherwise, it's going to return a null pointer to us. So it returns a char star, uh, which is a pointer to uh, that character inside of our string. Uh, and if that character doesn't exist in the string, then it's going to return a null pointer to us. So that is the uh, string char function. Uh, the string r char function, so you see that it looks exactly the same, it's just got an extra r in there, is going to locate the last occurrence of the character denoted by that ASCII value uh, and then return a pointer to the character in the string if it exists. But it's going to return the, 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 a pointer to the last occurrence of that character in our string rather than the first occurrence. So, kind of a neat function that uh, it'll go all the way to the end and then come backwards for us. Uh, string c span. Uh, this determines and returns the length of the initial segment of the first string consisting of characters not contained in the second string. So I give a little example down there at the bottom. So string uh, S1 is hello world, string S2 is wow, and then I say what is the length of string C span S1 comma S2. So what it's going to do is return the length of the initial segment of the first string consisting of characters not contained in the second string. So it's going to say, well, H is not in WOW, E is not in WOW, L is not in WOW, L is not in WOW, O is in WOW. So it's going to return to me one, two, three, four. And so length is going to get returned to me uh, as four. So it's kind of a function that can be used for a uh, substring. It gives you a little bit more information about it. Um, String span now determines and returns the length of the initial segment of the first string consisting only of characters contained in the second string. So looking at this example here, we have H is in the second string, E 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 is in the second string, space is not in the second string. So it returns one, two, three, four, five. So in this case, this one will return a five uh, to me. Uh, this one here, the string P uh, break, locates the first occurrence in the first string of any character in the second string. If a character from the second string is found, a pointer to the character in the first string is returned. So uh, this one is going to take all of the characters that are in the second string. It's going to try to find the occurrence of any of them in the first string, similar to this previous function, the string span function. And it's going to uh, then return to us a pointer to a, the character, uh, which is the first occurrence in the first string of any character that is in the second string. Uh, string string, kind of a fun name, uh, locates the first occurrence in the first string of the second string. So now this one, we're not just looking for occurrences of individual characters, we are looking for the occurrence of the entire second string. So uh, if the entire second string exists in the first one, this is going to return a pointer to the first character denoting uh, where that second string begins in the first string. Uh, if the second string is found, a pointer to the string in the first string is returned. If not, we will get a null pointer returned. So this is a good substring function. And then the last one here, this is one that we're going to be using in our program uh, for today, is the string toke 
This is how we can tokenize uh, a string. So we can break the first string into what are called tokens, separated by characters contained in the second string. So um, you see that uh, the second string is a const and the first string is not. So uh, the first string has the ability to be changed. We're going to call this function and pass in uh, the second parameter is going to be the tokens. And it is going to split the first string into separate substrings uh, whenever a character from that second string is found in the first string. Uh, the first call of this function contains a string as the first parameter. Subsequent calls to continue tokenizing the same string contains null as the first parameter. And then what is returned is a pointer to the current token uh, from each call that you make to that string token. If there are no more tokens, then null is returned. Okay, I know that I went kind of quickly over those. I didn't want to bore you too much. Uh, the best way that you can learn these functions is to write programs that use them. The program that we're going to write for today's lecture is going to use the string toke function. So I'm going to go over that in more detail when we write that program. I know this was a short lecture. So take the time to write some programs that utilize these functions that we have just gone over so that you fully understand how they work um, because they are fair game for the exam. Okay, if you have any questions, let me know. Good luck.